Hey, and welcome to another Lorenzo's Music Podcast. I'm Tom Ray. And today on the show, I talk to a musician who I found on Gemendo, but they also release their stuff on Bandcamp and Free Music Archive. And the thing is, is they describe themselves as just basically a one-man band with a ghetto setup is the way that their description is posted on these different sites. So I wanted to know more. I found their song Shit September and posted it on one of our listening playlists that we have on Spotify and on YouTube. And the it's just an interesting sound. So I wanted to know more. And it turns out that not only does the person just record the stuff on their iPhone, but they also use instruments that just happen to be around. Now by instruments, I'm talking children's toys and bottles, cans for percussion, and the guitar and bass are really just, he has one guitar and an amp and makes those sound the way he wants. It's a fun conversation and I learn a lot about how this person actually produces the amount of songs that they release and they release so much. Plus they were just featured recently in a video for a K-pop band. So we'll talk more about that as well. Here's the interview starting right now. My name is Eric Pizer. Um, from San Diego, live in San Diego, and I am Gagme Sharkov. I'm a one-man operation. And uh, I have a pretty ghetto setup compared to probably most folks out there. And it's really, uh, yeah, pretty, I mean, it's kind of what I think garage rock is really probably what it is actually. It's a guy in a garage with an amp who uses his guitar to also do the bass and doesn't actually have a real drum set, just uh, kind of a hodgepodge of children's instruments, percussion and other random oh. uh, drums and percussion I will buy at um, thrift stores or garage sales. I didn't know that part. Okay. Well, yeah. first, let me let me go back just a bit. So, and it, as you noticed, it made me laugh still. The name. Where did the name come from? Please tell me what Gag Me Shark Off is. Yeah. Um, so, there's a part of San Diego, um, kind of a coastal part called Point Loma. And that's like where the old time Portuguese fishing industry was. And there's just a lot of marinas down there and such. And I used to go eat at a place called Point Lomo Seafood with my parents, like, you know, one Friday a month. Right. And so all the boats are down there and you walk around and look at the boats and, you know, just check them out, I guess. But I think, I think as my dad told me, I just always started calling the place, the restaurant we went to gag me shark off. Okay. And I don't really remember why, but he told me it was actually like there was an ad for a lure and the lure was called, shark off and like the like the ad pitch was like gag me like you know get the get the fish gag me shark off so then i just called point loma seafood gag me shark off and then when i was just trying to think of a personal band name yeah. i just went with it because it was it always stuck in my memory so you you did that instead of just going by your name even though you're a one-man yeah. band yeah i don't want to go by my name okay that I'm makes kinda, sense I'm kind of mysterious in that sense. You're not going to see my picture on anything that I post or, you know, right. all, my, all the pictures I post, they're just pictures I take from usually the runs that I go on. I like taking a lot of nature photos and stuff. Is that what those are from? Yeah. If you see anybody out there in the, in the realm out there, if you ever see any of my stuff on either free music archive or maybe, I don't know, sound click or something, all those, you know, they're like, Oh, have a photo next to it. You know, you have to have a photo. Those yeah. are all just personal photos I've taken from runs, mostly just throughout San Diego County. Actually, probably most within like a 10 mile radius of my house. Okay, nice. And then I, you just mentioned Free Music Archive, and I either discovered you on Free Music Archive or on, do you upload to Gemendo as well? Yeah, I do. I don't know okay. if that gets a lot of attention or not. Free Gemendo Music Archive actually does. does. It's, it's just... It's more difficult these days for people to find it. And the analytics don't really tell you anything. Basically, the analytics go by your listens since the very beginning. So it's just a steady climb. Like that's all yeah. it is, is. It's just the analytics going up. Yeah, I'd like, like to think I'd like to think that, you know, it's just a steady climb. <laughs> exactly. I like that. I yeah. Like that. So so Gemendo's a bit confusing, but I believe that's where I heard you from. Um 
And uh, that's good to know you're on the Free Music Archive well as well. So uh, now with that, and my band, Lorenzo's Music, we're also a Creative Commons band, and those are Creative Commons sites. I did notice, though, on Bandcamp, you have it under all rights reserved. So tell me about your uploading, your reasoning behind uploading it to Free Music Archive and Jumendo and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I think when I first was doing it, I think just Bandcamp was the first thing I knew. So I yeah. just posted to there. And I mean, I, you know, I figured like, I think at first, I, I don't know if I charged or you can download the songs for free. I don't right. really know. Maybe I don't even know exactly. Like, well, you just told me I didn't even know, you know, so I no, just okay. try to charge a couple bucks for the albums. I figure on the other ones, I'm just uploading single tracks. I mean, I can't really charge anybody for that. And I really don't want to. Yeah. Um, and then so like Free Music Archive was kind of like one of the last sites that I like not recently, but like, you know, a couple of years ago found where I was like, oh, hey, I should give this a site or a, a chance I should post on here. Yeah. And that one's been the best one by far. I mean, oh, for I've sure. noticed I've noticed quite a few people using my stuff as background for their YouTube videos, which is cool because it's a lot of different stuff. You know, what I mean, it's a, it's quite a diverse range of like the videos people are doing. And yeah. Who knows if they would really like most of my music, but they, you know, that one song got them and I, who knows how they found it, but it's super flattering and cool. Um, yeah, I have like a really random, interesting story about uh, somebody using my stuff on there uh, that I just found out about like two weeks ago. It's funny. You reached out to me like right afterwards, but it's oh. a little bit of a story. So it's going to take a second. No, go ahead. It, I was actually just going to ask you what kind of videos has it been used in. Yeah, so go I ahead. Mean, like, so yeah, like the, the other ones, like not this one, I've seen like, fishing videos, uh, bike rides, um, like people either doing like time lapses of like, you know, the sky or their own like paintings or, mm -hmm. or put to animation. I mean, there's, there's quite a few, there's some that are really cool that, you know, and, I've, and I make a point to reach out to the people through YouTube and be like, Hey, thanks. You know, cause it kind of makes my day when I'm sitting here every day in the, you know, in my house working and it feels like the same day I'm reliving, you know, in terms of work. So it's right, yeah. to see that it picks you up, you know, and it, it's like, it's validation, it's motivation, it's all that. But, uh, so yeah, you know, just in, you know, kind of pat myself on the back, I sometimes will look up my name either on YouTube or Google just to mm -hmm. be like, Hey, is anything random popping up? You know? So I did that a couple of weeks ago and I saw this link to a, like a Korean magazine. And, you know, when you search something on Google, if, if like, say I search gag me shark, if it's actually on that page, it kind of shows up in bold. So I was like, mm -hmm. Oh, my name is actually on this website. What's going on. So I go to it. It's a magazine article about one of the members from the Korean, I believe Korean, like mega boy band BTS. Oh, I mean, I right. Yeah. Uh, I guess the guy's name is V and he was doing like a, a solo album before he had to, I think, um, go do his like required military service or whatever. So anyway, I guess the single for this song, they did a promotional video for it where he was filming the video at, I think it was like Cartier, like the luxury watch company. Mm -hmm. He was filming it like at their headquarters or their regional headquarters, or whatever in Korea. And it was like them along with W uh, Korea, which is like a branch of W magazine, which I guess is a luxury magazine. I don't know any of this until right. then. So anyway, long story short, they film a video and they put out a, promo a promotional, like 30 second sketch video. That's like a behind the scenes thing. It's like got like B roll and black and white cuts and, you know, him kind of joking around and throwing the mic and, you know, yeah, random shots. Well, anyway, they used one of my songs for the background music for this 30 second clip. And, and it, it mentioned it in the article, like, Oh, it was the, the sketch video was accompanied by a gag me shark off song. And it, you know, it said like known for his eclectic mix. I'm like known for man. Nobody really? knows. <laughs> you know? it, it wrote, it wrote it like uh, whoever wrote it, wrote it like I'm some known en entity, you know, not yeah. this guy, you know, that's just, you know, barely has any followers and <laughs> makes music out of his crush. But anyway, yeah. And then like W Korea put an Instagram reel out about it. And I found that it had like 11.3 million views and it had yeah. been like reposted like 500 times. And I was just like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. So I reached out to the brand, uh, like the brand marketing manager. I found the contact for W Korea magazine. And yeah, basically she told me the photographer on the project found the song on free music archive. They actually reached back to you. Yeah. She got back to me. It was great. See, she they never back get back to me. <laughs> We've we've had a similar thing. We had one within L uh, Korea video shoot. 
so L magazine in Korea, they okay, were doing yeah. a, a, a spoof. No, it wouldn't be a spoof, but like, you know, a themed photo shoot that was supposed to be based on the show Modern Family. Okay. And they had used our music in it. And I tried to reach out to them. Nothing, you know, so, so you got, you, yeah, you, they t- got oh. back to you and everything. And what's I really guess- funny is it was video of a musician you think they'd use his music, but maybe they couldn't get the rights. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, well, it's weird because, yeah, they did in conjunction with him. And, and, you know, the odd part was, like, in a, I don't know if it's just coincidence or not, but, like, the, the part of the song, of my song that they used, if you listen to this dude's single, it was, like, the, the bass line for his song matched up very closely to the, the guitar in my song. So I don't know if this guy, whoever the photographer was, was just f- trying to find a song that had, like, a same kind of vibe. But I was like, damn, it's, so, it's like it's in a different yeah. key. But those are like the same, you know, I'm not a big music theory guy. But I mean, I was like, damn, that sounds pretty similar. That's kind of cool and weird. But right. the whole thing was weird. And, and, but it was great free exposure. So can't hate yeah. on that. No, I forgot. I had just seen that on your Instagram account that you'd posted that. So when you were, I, I should have known that's what you were going to tell me about. Because uh, it's like, yeah, I, I did want to ask you about that. But that's super cool. So it, did yeah. you... Now, this is the question. Now, I've known other people who have gotten their stuff in a video that's gone viral. Um, how how was the roll-off onto your own account as far as followers? Did you see an uptick? Yeah, I mean, the, it, that's the thing. I, I felt kind of dumb about it. Well, not dumb because I didn't know about it, but like I, I found out about it a couple of weeks after it happened. But like okay. in those we, in those weeks, I was like, "Hey, this one song is getting a lot of like way more play on YouTube and Spotify all of a sudden." Like, what? And yeah, I'm like, "Oh, yeah, okay, here we go. That's why." Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I did, and and I mean, then that's all you hope for, right? Like to me, just the concept of like whether people knew it or not when they clicked on that video, like you know, they they heard a part of my music, and you know, and that's and that that's pretty cool. Like to be like 11.3 million people yeah. clicked on that, and like I didn't have to do absolutely anything for that to really happen, like. And even if just like a small percentage of those people were like, hey, I want to listen to that full song. And then just another percentage were like, oh, I want to check out more of what this this dude does. You know, that's that's uh, that's how it goes, you know? Yeah. And so speaking of that, too, now, as far as the you putting out music and making stuff like how did you get started? I know you've been putting out stuff pretty consistently, at least on your band camp, it says since 2018, I believe. Yeah, and that and that old stuff is just really basic, you know. It's just like guitar. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not like you know what what I'm what I'm at now. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like the same old story. You know, played music as a kid, played piano as a little kid, mm-hmm. started playing guitar in like sixth grade. Uh, I mean, I never really I took like a, a little bit of lessons, but I mean, maybe a month. So I I I, I can't read music or anything like that. So. Okay. But yeah, I mean, high school, you know, played it, played in some bands. Um, what kind of bands? Uh, punk bands. Okay. Um, As required by law for any kid yeah. growing up. <laughs> oh, especially if you're going to like parochial private school, totally required, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it was cool. It was a good time. I mean, where I went to school, there was a, like the all ages venue in San Diego was just right down the street. So it was really cool. And, you know, I went to, I went to uh, high school and like, 96 through 2000 so uh it was a great time for you know like punk music kind of the new school punk you know uh, surfer type wave and and also third wave ska was huge so i was really into that in high school as well so uh but yeah i was was in some punk bands then in college uh i mean i was in like one band with some of the same guys from high school but i never really did much up in up in college besides just play and it wasn't until really like that. And I was in some bands after that, but it wasn't until like I uh, met my wife, had a son that I kind of went my own way. And I really got into writing my own stuff, you know, where I was just like, man, I, I just need to be writing my own music. Like, right. I, I'm good enough. And, you know, obviously, like, I don't have the free time to meet with people and really dedicate myself, you know, to be in a band with other people. But that doesn't that doesn't mean it's got to stop me at all. You mm-hmm. know, so. I guess hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does. And also you had mentioned before that you have been kind of hodgepodging stuff together to put it uh, 
I guess one way uh, as far as like the drums and playing in kids instruments for the drum sets. So tell me about your process for making a song. I'd really love to know more about how you achieve the, uh, I think you referred to it as garage junk band. I mean, it could be junk. It could be rock. It can be whatever you want. Yeah. 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 uh, In terms of like, you know, we'll we'll get beyond the part of like, Hey, I'm messing around in my house and I I lay down the song. Like when I go out in the garage, most times I like to have like at least one part, like kind of solidified in my mind. I'm not out there kind of trying to waste my time so much. And uh, so usually it's whether it's a guitar or bass line, go out and record that. And then, you know, the fun starts after that, where it's the layering where like, you know, you probably are familiar with, you you write a part, just one track of a song, but in your head, and even you, you might hear what you want it to be. And even if you don't, you just know like, man, I can really elaborate on this. You know, like what this is right here, just this guitar, it's going to be so much more than this. And that's where the fun and the creative part comes in more is that layering. Um, for the drums though, like, like I said, for the, well, for the guitar, I don't have a bass. So I just play the bass lines on my guitar and then I'll just change the levels on, when I'm mixing it to like low. To give oh, you're it not like even that. detuning yeah. it or using different strings? No, no. I just, <laughs> and I just make it sound deeper. You know, I'm like, yeah. that's, that's, now you got your bass. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so for the drums, it's kind of like you have to almost record like three or four different tracks to really replicate what a full set would sound like just on one track right Mm -hmm. so you got to do the kick drum you got to do you know a snare and and a shaker or then you got to do two shakers or you know whatever else i mean i i'll use random stuff all the time you know bottles um i don't know whatever's around i just got like a new little tribal I guess it's a tribal drum and it has like tribal skin on it, but okay. uh, that that's cool. You know, it's got doom, 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 doom. So, and what I do is I kind of just, when I do the drums, I just do all sorts of stuff over it. And then, you know, the editing process is where it's like, okay, some of it, you know, you pick and choose, obviously you have to have like, you know, a solid track laid down that's laying down a beat, but all the other stuff I kind of pick and choose and I can move around. Um, sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. And that, that part's probably the most time consuming part because you have to listen through everything. And like I said, like, yeah, you could just no, find like one 10 is... second part and be like, Oh, that sounds good right there. But the rest of it, that percussion doesn't sound good at all. It doesn't work at all. Yeah. 90% of making music is listening back to what you just did. <laughs> it's really yeah. And then, just... and then it's hard to tell if it's really good at the end, you know, mm-hmm. you almost need other people to listen to it to be like, I mean, I think this is good, but like I've listened to this so many times that like, I'm hearing that one spot where I still think it kind of doesn't sound perfect, you know? Like, yeah. And, and that's, you know, to, to your point of like, that's a, I, probably a hard part about recording when it's just you, mm-hmm. because like you will lay down a guitar and maybe certain par- parts aren't exactly on time. And then you got to put the drums down and it can throw you off. You know? right. So you have to adapt for that sometimes. And that can actually change like how your percussion is because you kind of have to, yeah get out of rhythm sometimes to match up with the guitar Mm -hmm. um you know and yeah i've had stuff where i like my guitar was just a little bit different tuned and i go back to record another guitar uh track over it you know a lead or whatever or backing track and i'm like oh dude i gotta change the tuning of my guitar like this isn't even in proper tuning like you know so yeah like you go a week back you know so uh, yeah. So sometimes I try to do that where I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go out here today and just do all the guitar for the song, you know, right. and I'll worry about the rest later. So you're recording these all in a linear fashion. Like you're not doing, when you were talking about, you need a bass drum part or you need a snare part. You're not just sampling the part and then creating the beat. You're saying you'll play that bass drum part, then go the on time. to record in real time. You're saying. Yeah, I'll play through. The, I'll play the whole song. Okay. Yeah. All right. But I, I mean, there's times where it's like, Oh, it's a complicated part in a song. And then I'll go back and edit it and be like, Oh, I, you know, like where I do a similar fill, but maybe I do that fill like four times yeah. over a gap. And I'm like, Oh, that one sounds on point. So I'm going to copy that and put it here where I can hear like, Oh, I, I hear the stick hit the side of the drum on that one. I don't really like that. So I'll use this, you know what I mean? There's some of that, but when I'm initially doing it, yeah, I'll play it all the way through the songs. Okay. You know? All right. Yeah. I was just curious if you were grabbing the samples and then arranging them or if you were playing them full on. Interesting. So what DAW are you using when you're recording these? Uh, I use this thing. It's called the iPhone. Really? Yep. All right. 
I told you it's a ghetto setup, man. <laughs> so tell me more about the ghetto setup. How are you using the iPhone? I just use GarageBand on my phone. <laughs> okay, so you are using GarageBand. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then you don't mix it like later on on the laptop or anything or like transfer it over. You're just strictly doing it only from your phone. Yeah. I mean, okay. I was at one, at one point I was using uh, a computer, but then the uh, my son's computer, but then it went to shit. And uh, um, <laughs> as as sons do, uh, and laptops it, and computers well, like, too. The screen got all. I don't know what happened, but then the, the mic the mic didn't work as well. Like and uh, so with that, I was able to put more like uh, I guess post effects on like the instruments if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I can add stuff to this phone, but I, I really don't. So uh, my more recent stuff what you hear is pretty straight up. Like there's not really any after effects being put on that stuff. Um, I'm just maybe changing the levels, but like, uh, yeah, I'm not putting too much on there. And I mean, I don't even, when I record, I don't even have distortion pedals. So it's either clean or in the middle or distorted. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's it, you know, or, you know, some more reverb, some less reverb, but yeah, it's, it's pretty like, I'm kind of just focused on like making the music than getting complicated with the uh, tech, I guess. Yeah. And like I was saying before, you put out a lot of music and uh, aside from the just finding out that your <laughs> music got used in a video or something like that, like, do you do anything else with the music? Do you promote it or are you just writing it and putting it out there and that's the end of it and you move on? Yeah. I mean, I guess that's, <laughs> that's how I promote it in my mind. Like, yeah. yeah, I just, yeah, I just put it out to the world that that is exactly right and people find it eventually it takes time you know that song that got used on that video i wrote that song or released it more than two years ago it's like how did that get found now and used? right i don't know it yeah I, the, the long tail of videos it's really just they're easier to get found somehow I, like a lot of our songs from like many many years ago just from the length of time of course they have more plays but God, if they don't still get like tons of views every single day. And it's like, I'm not even promoting these anymore. They're from albums that like, we can't even play anymore. Like we don't even know how to do the yeah. song live anymore. Oh dude, that's, that's like all my songs. I'm like, yeah, I don't even, I couldn't even remember how to play that. I mean, I probably could, but like when you, when you have like a three or four guitar tracks on a song, you're like, yeah, I don't think I'd probably remember all those, but yeah. Do you play live at all? <laughs> no. No. Okay. No, 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 not at all. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know how it would work. I mean, it, yeah. I don't, it, I wouldn't be able to replicate what I do. So it'd be kind of hard to feel like satisfied with it. I think. Yeah. No. And it's, it, I was just curious because with the, um, I keep forgetting the description you use, which I love on your sites, how you, it, you talk about your setup with your ghetto setup that you refer to it as. I was just curious if you were able to take that on the road, but then yeah, with the whole, like even just recording it on your phone, um, I, which still amazes me, but yeah, it's like, then how would you do that live? I've known people that have done that where they just loop their phone, I suppose. Yeah. I don't know if you have any interest in playing out live. I'm just, for some reason, I'm like trying to imagine a way that you could, oh, even if, though if you like, play all the instruments. I wouldn't mind playing live, but I'd have to have like people come to me and be like, we want to learn your songs and play them, <laughs> which I would feel <laughs> kind of weird about. You know, so like. Because every like, musician knows it's that easy. People come to you and go, we'll be yeah. your band. Yeah, for sure. I mean, for me, it's like, there's not really an end goal of like, yeah, like, what I'm doing, but like in a perfect world, I'd yeah. be writing music for movie soundtracks and shows and commercials and stuff. You know, that's like what I'd love to do. I, I that's how I see people use my music. So mm -hmm. it's just like, it seems like, okay, well, that seems like the, uh, what I'd like to do. But at the same time, it's like this non music daily work grind and just general life. It is the fuel for all of it, you know? Yeah. Like, all my song titles, they're just off of like daily stuff that's going on in my life at that time, you know? So with all, without all that, there might not be this, you know what I mean? So it's Which kinda... makes sense. Like the song that I found you through was your song Shit September, which I put on one of our uh, weekly listening playlists that, yeah, that we that. do. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And I mean, that makes sense. I, I assumed that the title was really just kind of self-explanatory, but... 
I didn't know if there was anything more it, to it than that. It, it, it wasn't so much like personal, like, oh, a bunch of bad stuff happened in right. September. It wasn't like that. It was just usually September in San Diego, we get great weather. And this last year, the weather just sucked. So I just thought it was shit September. I'm in Wisconsin. September always sucks. Uh, yeah. it, even when it gets hot, it's like, yeah, but you know, winter's going to happen in just a minute and then everything's going <laughs> to suck. So I don't want to get on weather. Everybody else's yeah. weather is better according to me than where I live. Um, do you have any plans to uh, make physical copies or CDs or sell anything like that ever? Or even I mean, t-shirts. Have you thought about doing t-shirts? If, if I had the financial wherewithal to, to do that stuff, I would. I mean, I could make my own t-shirts. I think we have like a cricket machine. But nice. <laughs> you know, I actually no, thought you're about, still working I, I, with the children's toys and, and like parent stuff, like a yeah, cricket machine yeah. is such a parent thing to have. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I thought about making stickers cause you could do those on cricket machine oh, and yeah. just put, put them around like, uh, you know, on little like random signs. If I see a sign out where I'm on a run or something, I mean, I put a sticker of my friend's record shop on a, on a sign right by my son's old school, like eight years ago and it's still there. So whoever made those stickers, man, those are solid. Really? It looks real good still. They still, they hold up in the weather. That, you're saying. Whatever, whatever that one is, it, it, it holds up. It's still there. I'm like, all right. Huh. Okay. All right. Yep. Shout, shout out Folk Art Records, San Diego people. Nice. Best record shop in town. And then uh, before we go today, are there any other things that you have coming up or projects you're working on or songs that you're going to be releasing in the future that you'd like to tell people about? Oh, yeah. Most certainly. I'm always working on stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I got a... I got, I mean, a new album, I guess, in the works. But I mean, you know, that's what's great about like Free Music Archive and those sites is, you know, you can, I just like posting single tracks. So I, I posted a couple tracks from what is going to be this album already. Um, but I got probably like 10 others. Um, I mean, yeah, I do have 10 others. It's just, I have to, I just want to restring my guitar right now and have okay. fresh strings, have fresh strings. So I'm, I'm ready to go because I'm going to grind. So when I go, I go. But yeah, I think I'm going to call it uh, Recreation and Good Times. I, I just thought it was catchy and it's going to come out probably during the summer. So it kind of fits and I don't know. But yeah, I, I got I got some some stuff coming up. And I, I like to have the court sometimes like funny song names and sometimes not, you know, but. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, nice. I find it, kind of, it kind of helps. I think sometimes people find the songs based on the, the names or they at least it makes them laugh and interested. <laughs> No, I, I definitely, when I went to go find more of your songs and I went looking for you over on Spotify to add it to the playlist, I did enjoy the songs. Plus, there's the whole gag me shark off, which yeah. that's that's just a good <laughs> like, thing in general. Like that, you know, like that song, not to bring back the whole uh, Korea uh, video thing, but uh, yeah, that song is called uh, Daddy Bought Me a Swag Chain. And, uh, <laughs> and that's just a random, you know, I mean, that, and think- that's like, do you think that, that might be how it got found because they looked up the word swag? Because of Cartier and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it has nothing to do with actual luxury watches. It actually, right. it was a, it was a baseball reference to like three years ago. You, uh, you said you're in uh, Wisconsin. I don't know yeah. if you're a Brewers fan or not, but I, I like the Padres and it was a year where they were, they had this giant chain and it had like an SD on it. It was like a flavor flave chain and it like uh-huh. spun the SD and they'd always put it on the guy's heads when, after they hit a home run. But like the problem was they like had a real shit year and I was like something rubbed me the wrong way about them like celebrating something that they should be doing because they're talented baseball players. You hit home runs yet. You're like way under 500. I was like, I, something about this sits wrong with me. So that was where that came from was like, daddy was just like, you know, the ownership or what, I don't know what it was, but (laughs) you don't normally hear motivational lyric stories like this yeah. <laughs> it's based on a based on a thing they do at a baseball game well this is how my mind works you know they just random everyday stuff and then it uh yeah ends the song i mean i'm not writing i'm not writing love songs or anything like that i, I like to write stuff that kind of everybody could some somewhat relate to or right <laughs> find funny i guess i don't know <laughs> and if people wanted to check out more mu- more of your music where should they go do that yeah like you said free music archive Bandcamp, uh, you know, I got an Instagram and, a, and an X account. I don't post much unless, you know, it's to pat myself on the back or to uh, <laughs> shamelessly promote my own stuff. Right. Uh, but yeah, you can, you can find me on all those. And uh, I think SoundClick, I still put stuff on and Jamendo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's me, man. That's where I'm at. Well, great. 
Uh, thanks so much for doing this. I was glad I got to meet you. This is the first podcast interview I've ever done, so super flattered, man, and appreciative. Pew, pew. Uh-huh.